Hello Ragers! In this very serious, educational FHTB YouTube video, we will be analyzing some uh, unique streetwear-related Instagram influencers in order to see how they are able to stand out amongst the crowd of NPC Explore page clones that are ever so common nowadays. Now, these influencers may not necessarily be the best role models, nor the most fashionable, but they most certainly have thrown their self-respect out the window, taken the Explore page red pill, and have been blessed with the divine knowledge of figuring out how to get my attention, along with apparently the attention of thousands of others by using a variety of different tactics which I will be dissecting in this video. In all seriousness, I wanted to make a video about this topic as I have recently talked a lot about specific brands and clothes on this channel, but I haven't necessarily talked about people who wear clothes. I guess they're into that kind of thing, I don't know, it seems pretty weird. So I have handpicked five prominent Instagram figures that all have sort of their own unique characteristics or their own niche style of posts or editing or whatever it may be, and I will be exposing their keys to success. So take notes, this will be on the final exam. Finally, I'm legally obligated to say this, but don't don't send hate to anyone I feature in this video, this is strictly educational content, and I'm gonna try my hardest to take this seriously, so don't expect me to be all like, cringe bro, look bro, this is so cringe, look at this cringe bro, it's cringe. Real quick too, if you enjoy this video and want me to showcase more noteworthy influencers in the future, feel free to comment any suggestions below. Alright, I'll stop stalling and just get on with the video. Suck my dick so good, I'm like, god damn, you dirty bitch, you dirty bitch, you dirty Starting off with Jake Marcello 12, right off the bat it is apparent that he often uses editing a lot in his posts in order to stand out, which I've come to realize is a common theme amongst a few of the people that we'll be talking about today. But back to Jake, starting at the bottom of his feed, you can clearly see that he started out as just a pretty normal dude, nothing too noteworthy here, but that all changed when he got a Gucci bag it looks like. It also looks like around this time he started to sort of try harder if that makes any sense, like, just look at the way he uses color blocking in his posts. I don't know if that's the proper terminology, but what I'm trying to say is background matches clothes, which is more appealing to the eye. And a common tactic that many streetwear-related influencers use, just take a look at some outfit repost pages and you'll see a plethora of people using color blocking. Here, you can tell that he features a shopping cart in a handful of his pictures, and obviously that trend didn't catch on, so more of the story, don't take pictures in shopping carts. Now, things are starting to pick up with this picture here, which seems to be the start of his use of heavier editing. Although it's definitely subtle, it still looks clean and doesn't look like he's trying too hard to stand out. This pic performed better engagement-wise than his others, and I think he must have taken note of that as he began using more editing in his future posts. I'll provide a few examples here. If you look at the likes, the Photoshop pictures do way better, like at least 50% better than his non-edited pics. Jumping ahead a bit, he's hopped on the It's May memes giant jacket trend a few times, as well as adding in giant versions of himself into the background of his posts. Oh, and a few times he's like edited videos onto his jacket, which is pretty cool actually. I guess he'd have to be wearing like a green screen jacket or some shit, but nonetheless, it's pretty interesting. Other than that, and obviously him wearing the occasional hyped garment, those are pretty much his core strategies. In summary, the key takeaways from Jake here are use color blocking as it's visually appealing, don't take pictures in shopping carts, they're bad for engagement, possibly reminds people of childhood trauma when they were trapped in an upside down shopping cart and couldn't get out from under it. Also includes subtle edits such as cloning yourself, making yourself giant, or like looking the other way in a mirror selfie. Also, copy its main memes. Next up, we have Ghost Rich 2, who is probably unironically my favorite influencer that we'll be talking about today. To me, he's like the human embodiment of the Instagram Explore page. He has definitely sacrificed his dignity to Mark Zuckerberg and, his, and the Instagram gods in exchange for success. His posts are truly something else. I don't even know how to describe it. But I, I'm obviously not in his target demographic, but he still gets my attention, even if it is for the wrong reasons. Anyway, let's see why he stands out. Starting off strong right off the bat, we have whatever this is, a CDG Converse post and an e-boy post, some color blocking and the odd semi-normal yet edgy post thrown in there as well. There's no real theme yet, it just seems like a lot of shit presented in different ways. Then, similarly to the previous dude I talked about, Ghost Rich appears to have been experimenting with subtle editing and camera tricks as well, such as taking a picture with an invisible phone and cloning himself to light his own cigarette. Again, similarly to Jake, Ghost's edited pictures performed a lot better engagement-wise, so I'm assuming that's why he continued to push them out. Also, there seems to be a lot of cries for help included in a lot of these posts. I think someone should maybe check in on him. Anyway, back to Cyberbully. I mean, uh, analyzing. Uh, yeah, the edgy, quirky, relatable, self-deprecating posts seem to perform well for him. It's evident that he's developed a pretty distinct yet generic formula for his pictures. Basically, he'll take a somewhat ordinary picture and insert hyped clothing piece here, 
but he adds in a variable, such as rainbow piss or a hand coming out of pants, and that variable is often the attention grabber. He often tends to use bright colors, and it appears as if he is self-aware and just fully embraced the character. He has to be baiting those repost pages with these pictures, and it's definitely working, as his posts do get reposted a lot. I just find it hard to believe that this is actually who he is IRL, it's definitely an act for attention, and it's working, so I give him props for that. All in all, what we've learned here is, subtle editing is definitely key, we've seen this in both influencers now. The use of self-deprecating humor maybe helps, or include random phrases that 14-year-old white girls will like. Also, add in quirky or unusual objects to your picture to get people's attention, along with the use of bright colors. And finally, selling your soul and getting rid of any self-respect that you have is definitely another major key. I'm probably gonna pronounce this wrong, but Hosen or Hosin Packer seems to be a streetwear enthusiast with a knack for editing as well. He has 110,000 followers, but I just realized that his recent pictures only get anywhere from like 1 to 2,000 likes, which is pretty low. However, I wanted to feature him in this video nonetheless because he has a handful of noteworthy posts. Throughout his Instagram journey, it appears as if he started off by posting some music-related stuff, then transforming into a Jerry boy, followed by embracing the, the off-white and streetwear hype in 2017, to then appearing like Hypebeast clone number 10,247. His posts during this era that featured bright colors, hyped clothes, or women seemed to do the best engagement wise for him. Hey, I'm a simple man, I see off white belt, I see hot girl, I click like. From there, he slowly began to integrate more editing and photoshopping into his posts as seen here. Then he went full on swag mode. These three posts in a row are probably the best Instagram posts that I've ever seen in my life. This is it guys, if you are going to take any information away from this video, let it be this. Copy these exact posts and you will achieve stardom in no time. But for real, he went on to post more Photoshop pictures, some featuring a clone of himself, some with a very real looking Lamborghini, and another one where he is cut in half. Honestly, in this case, I feel as if his account took a turn for the worse. He was doing well engagement-wise when he was making normal posts, but once he started trying hard with the edits, that's when things began to look down. Without sounding like too harsh here or anything, this seems like an instance of someone who doesn't have their own style slash personality and is trying way too hard to overcompensate for that. But all in all, a few takeaways here are women plus hype clothes equals likes, and either fully embrace the meme like Ghost Rich and sell your soul, or you'll fade into irrelevancy. Also, use Simpsons edits and wear expensive clothes. In all seriousness though, don't appear to try too hard as that could lead to your downfall. Moving on to Zoom that shit, or Samsara. I'm guessing that the name Samsara is meant to be a play on words involving their names as well as like that cycle of death and rebirth. Um, their whole stick is basically matching hashtag goals couple photos, which they have been consistently posting for about a year now. Expanding on that, the couple photos match with the fact that the photos are staged to look like the paparazzi are taking the pic, gives the illusion that they're some sort of celebrities. This method definitely seems to have worked as they've risen to popularity fairly quickly and have been featured in a few magazine articles. So if you want a 100% working Instagram fame method, tap in, head over to Craigslist and hire a female to pose in pictures with you. That will only result in instant success, no downsides whatsoever. On top of that, them wearing very matchy, hyped and bright clothes certainly helps get the viewer's attention. Overall, although this isn't necessarily revolutionary and groundbreaking, they've definitely created a neat little fun niche style of post and they appear to be enjoying doing them, which is always good to see. The takeaways here are get a girlfriend or rent one, fake it until you make it in the sense of faking paparazzi photos, and again, hype and flashy and colorful clothes and matching also work too. Last but not least, we'll be taking a look at Eric Whiteback 2.0, aka Max Miller. At first glance, I can tell that he keeps on top of current streetwear slash supreme releases and trends, which is a smart move as that has definitely helped him maintain and increase his relevancy online, as nowadays obviously people are consuming content much faster and much more frequently thanks to social media. On top of that, he uses a lot of color blocking as well as props to enhance his photos and make them more visually appealing. Taking a look at the start of his feed, his first post was in 2017, and he seemed to just post your average run-of-the-mill streetwear related pics, often featuring the latest Supreme items, some standouts being a couple pieces from the Supreme XLV collab as well as many box logos. He then continued on posting mostly Supreme related outfits throughout the end of 2017 and all of 2018, which at the time was when Supreme was still very much hyped. He also began to post more gimmick type pictures such as Supreme hammock subway, invisible boatmobile, and Iron Man who has access to his mom's credit card. But through consistency and staying on top of trends, he has garnered over 180,000 followers. Now let's take a look in depth at some of those specific tactics that he's used. 
Obviously, as I mentioned, staying on top of trends is key, and keeping up with the latest clothing drops and getting a pick for the gram as soon as possible and as frequently as possible is definitely a good strategy. Also, this works well if you're a reseller because you're able to just keep rotating your closet in order to keep up with relevant fresh fits. However, this would definitely be a lot of work and probably pretty stressful as you may not always like the newer releases, so I could imagine that it would be hard to fake it sometimes, but then again, faking shit on social media is nothing new. I've also noticed that his use of props has definitely helped him stand out, such as the iconic pyrocynical inspo TV on the head fits that he's done. These are definitely an explore page magnet. I've seen this picture posted on countless Hypebeast accounts, but for real though, including props and accessories is a great way to get people's attention. And again, his use of color blocking as well as themed and matching outfits has definitely helped his photos stand out. Despite the fact that maybe the clothes aren't all that special or unique necessarily, he is still able to shine nonetheless. To recap, what we've learned from Mac Miller RIP here is number one, keep up with trends if your sole purpose is to gain followers and stay relevant. Also, use props and accessories to add a unique flair without going too over the top. Also, theme posts and outfits, along with matching outfits and color blocking, are definitely essentials. Now that we've explored those interesting influencers, I'll highlight the key takeaways here, so make sure you take notes. The exam will be on July 7th and will be worth 45% of your final grade. So, color blocking is definitely key, as we've noticed, along with subtle edits with Photoshopped. Relatability is definitely useful. A use of props and unusual objects will definitely get people's attention. Selling your soul to the Instagram gods is key. Don't take pictures in shopping carts. Women plus expensive clothes equal likes. Fake it until you make it. Wear hyped clothes to make up for your lack of personality. Keep up with current trends. Theme your posts and use matching outfits, along with buying a girlfriend from the dark web. Now, I'd say that's pretty much it. If you achieve Instagram stardom because of this video, I expect some sort of commission. But in all seriousness, if you did enjoy this video and would like to see a part 2, leave a like and suggest some other influencers that I should analyze. Other than that, thank you for watching, I hope you have an epic day or night. Later, ragers. Yo, Pierre, you wanna come out here? <laughs>